Welcome back to Farm and Hammer, everyone. No, the title is not clickbait. I did buy some cows, and uh, some of them look a little strange. So um, I'll get into that in just a minute. But just to kind of give you a rundown of what I've got going on today, like I said, I'm going to show you the cows. Um, I did sell all the stalkers, so that's kind of where these cows come in. I'll explain that here in a bit. And then once I show you the new cows, I've got my bottle calves that you saw me work in the last video. They were actually worked about two weeks ago. So the bulls that have been banded, they're now doing great, which means it's time to haul them out to the rental property where I've got these cows. So, so that's what I'm gonna do after I explain this whole cow situation. Um, I'm gonna, I've already got the calves caught, but I'm just gonna load them in the trailer back here and uh, train them to electric fence and dump them off on the new property. So as you guys saw a couple videos back, I ended up purchasing a little over 50 some head of stalker calves these were anywhere from 200 pounds to 350 pounds um, they were pretty much a completely mixed group of calves um, i bought them all at the sale barn had them hauled in the initial plan was to buy about 150 stalker calves i only bought 50 some um, get them straightened out for the first month and then once spring and summer hit i'd be grazing them all spring summer um, sell a group off late summer and then sell the rest of them in the fall so that was the plan going into all this um, I thought it had it all pretty well worked out. But yeah, after I brought most of the calves in, I thought I was on a pretty good stretch. I had very few that were sick. I hadn't lost any yet. And then I lost two, all pretty much all of a sudden, which I thought was kind of strange. And then after that, I slowly started losing another one or two here and there, and it just started to go downhill pretty quickly. Um, so what I think happened was, the first 10 calves I bought, I didn't have them PI tested. For those of you that don't know, PI just stands for persistently infected. Um, that's a calf that has BVD and will always have BVD and will always be spreading BVD even though they don't look sick. Um, so I didn't have the first original 10 tested for it. The rest of the calves I did and they all came back negative. So what I think happened is one of those first 10 was actually PI positive and they were spreading BVD to all the rest of the calves. So it all went through the herd pretty quickly. A lot of them got runny noses. Um, talked to the vet. I ended up giving them some medicated feed, but at that point I think it was a little too late. Um, so I ended up losing a few head and uh, at that point I just decided I better get rid of this group before anything worse happens. So um, I'm not sure if it actually was a PI case or if I just had pneumonia run through, um, but whatever it was, it wasn't great. At the time I sold, I didn't have any sick. I did have one that had a limp, so that one brought like 40 bucks. <laughs> and then I had a really small one that I never just got straightened out great. Um, so she was pretty skinny and she brought like 60 bucks. So um, those two didn't sell well, but the rest of them, I sold them for about 150 more than I paid for them. Um, so in total, after the ones I lost and the feed I had spent feeding them for the month and a half, I had them. I almost broke even, but I did end up losing money. Um, and of course, that's not including my time I put in. But um, so yes, I did lose money. That was not the plan to keep them for that short amount of time and get rid of them. Um, but I wasn't sure how bad this sickness was going to be. So, so I got rid of them. I decided I'd let the pastures rest for a while, hopefully kill any bacteria or virus that was out there. And, uh, and then the plan was to buy some bread cows, third stage, hopefully, and bring them in. And I'll show you them now. I made it out to the cattle pasture, um, the rental farm. As you can see, there's actually quite a bit of fescue out here. Um, this hasn't been grazed since last August. Even though we were in a drought, it still had some grass left. So anyway, there's some fescue on this hillside. What I've been doing is strip grazing these 10 cows right now. Just giving them a little bit every day um, because I'd like to get this grass another eight inches taller before I let them onto bigger pastures. Cause I'm trying to buy as much time as I can um, for this grass to grow because I've got more cows more cows on the way. So I'll try to show you what I bought. Like I said, I've just got 10 right now. Um, I can pretty much support 30 cows out here and their calves. And um, then I plan on bringing those bottle calves you just saw me work, I plan on bringing them out here to graze as well. So you're gonna see them all probably run away from me. Um, when I first got them home, I let them out, they went nuts, they were running around crazy, they were terrified of me. And they were also not electric fence trained. So yeah, they ran right through my electric wire multiple times. Um, but finally, I got the fence going where it should have been. 
they got shocked pretty good and they've respected it ever since then so since i've been giving them a new piece of grass every day they have come around they're not as wild anymore um, and they have figured out when i come out here i'm moving the fence and that means fresh grass so once i finish moving the fence they all normally come back to me um, start grazing on the new grass and uh here within another week i'm assuming they'll really have it figured out and they'll be following me around like the bottle cows do but it'll take some time to get two of them settled down so as you can tell we've got a whole mismatch of cows here definitely don't look like the normal herd you're used to seeing all black cows or baldy cows um, but as you guys know the cattle market has been on its way up and bred cows have gotten super expensive especially good ones so I waited around the sale barn for four or five hours and these were the only 10 I could come home with. Um, these were about 860 bucks on average. I didn't spend more than that. Um, you can see we've got a longhorn there. And most of the other ones here are gonna be beef cows that are old. Um, I've got one broke mouth, that black one there in the middle. Um, that Charlet there and the red cow behind her are seven year olds. That one there is another short and solid old cow. There's a four-year-old, she's a monster cow. And then those three over there are six-year-olds. The black and the red right there in frame are second stage bred, and the rest of them are third stage. Um, so they should all be calving here in the next month or two. Um, there's one more cow you haven't seen. That is another longhorn. And uh, she actually had a calf this morning. So I bought her last week, she's already had her calf. Um, they said at the sale barn they expected her to be bred to a Charlet, and I'm not so sure that was the case. I'm guessing she was bred to a Longhorn or maybe a Coriani, uh, but I'm guessing a Longhorn. Her calf is not going to be valuable. I'm not even sure if it's a bull or a heifer yet. I didn't get close to her this morning, but um, we'll go try to get close to her. She actually was a pretty calm cow till she had her calf, and now she every time she sees me she starts running away, leaving her calf. So. Um, we'll see how close I can get. And that longhorn cow, she's actually getting close to calving. So I'm expecting her to calve in the next week or two. And I did buy the two longhorns together, so they're buddies. They don't like leaving each other. So anyway, there's the, there's the little calf. Looks like it is a heifer calf. Anyway, but it is getting around pretty good for being less than a day old. Try to get a better view of the baby here. Yeah, cute little booger, but she won't be worth much, that's for sure. All right, so I've got the calves in the alley. They came right in, the little feed. Um, I've got them divided up equally into two. You got 12 on this side, 12 on this side. It's actually got 13, but I'm gonna leave one of them behind. That one right there. Um, but the rest of them, the rest of them I'm going to take to the rental place. Come on. Turn around. Let's go. Come on.
Okay, we eventually got there. All right, got the second group unloaded and out with the others. Um, looks like we've had two escapees that crossed the fence while I was gone. Well, I'm guessing they got shocked in the process. Because the other ones were getting shocked when they were testing it out earlier. So I know the fence is working, but they probably just snuck under it or got shocked on the way. Um, this group's doing okay, still exploring the place. I don't think they found the pond yet for water, but. Got the other two escapees in. I'm gonna see if I can convince them to follow me over to the pond. Cause what I don't want them to do is go looking for water that direction, cross the fence and all that. So once we get one over here, the rest should, should follow. They're getting off close. There we go, it looks like one of them found it. The others are nipping on some grass over here. 